Hey guys, welcome, welcome once again. Uh, my name is Israel Gutierrez and today's video is about the driver that everybody is talking about it. Sergio Checo Perez. So stay with us because we are ready to go. Hi everybody, I hope everybody is having an excellent, excellent day and we're gonna talk today about Sergio Checo Perez and as we all know, he's having this amazing season in Formula 1 he's already in 4th position on the Drivers' Championship he pushed Racing Point with this uh, last podium to the 3rd position on the Constructors' Championship he's driving in another level he's showing everybody that he what he's made it for so he's ready, he wants to keep uh, going on Formula 1 so we'll see what happens with Checo Perez and fr on Friday morning uh, there was a couple of tweets from the Formula 1, the official website of the Formula 1 and they did like a little uh, note on Checo Perez about what I just talked, great season, uh, the points and, and why he doesn't have a seat yet So. Then the, uh, the next uh, tweet was about all the seasons that he has been in Formula 1 and all the points that he has scored in each year. So to me that sounds like a, they are kind of like, a, I won't say impressed, but I think they're happy. They want to let people know about this great driver that he's doing everything in his hands to to be the, the fourth position on the driver championship, to leave a racing point on the third position. Remember, he's not gonna be with them next uh, year, but I think he wants to leave that for them to as an appreciation for all the time that they were together in this work relationship. And I think he's doing everything on his hands, and everybody, as I say, is talking about it. I see more, <laughs> seriously, more people talking about the this subject with Red Bull why why not why not yet but we are forgetting that all that he has done on his uh, Formula One career and even before that so let's talk a little bit about that so as we know he is uh, born in Mexico in Guadalajara in 1990 he started karting when he was six years old then on 2005 he had the opportunity to go to Germany and race on the Formula BMW and he went, He won a race, he was a second place in another race and then in 2007 on the Formula 3, the British Formula 3 he was the champion, he won 14 races in that year so he was 17 years old and he was already showing what he was capable of and then 2008 and 9 in 2010 he was in GP2 GP2 series GP2 Asia and he also was showing what he was made of in 2010 on his last season on GP2 series he was the second place of the championship and he was just behind Pastor Maldonado so that was great so at the end of 2010 that's when the big announcement that he was going to join uh, Sauber for the 2011 season it was, it was a big news for the Mexican motorsport everybody was talking about it even before that, before the announcement everybody was talking about Checo Perez and when that was confirmed that he was going to race for Sauber wow, what a great news also at the, around the same time the Ferrari uh, Young Academy for the Young Drivers he signed Checo Perez to be part of that academy so that was great for Checo Perez showing that he was on something so his first season in Formula 1 as I say in 2011 so Checo Perez he finished in ninth position and his first points in Formula 1 were in the Spain so that was good for Checo Perez it was the, I think, the year where he was adapting to Formula One, how Formula One was uh, running, the cars, etc., etc. For 2012, 
Checo Perez, he had three podiums with Sauber, two second places, one third place. And there is this amazing, uh, the first podium for Checo Perez, he was, he was in Malaysia in 2012. And there's this, uh, it was an amazing podium. I'll tell you why, because if you remember in that uh, GP, Fernando Alonso was on the lead and Checo Perez was right behind Fernando Alonso. Personally, I think Checo Perez had a huge, huge opportunity to win that race. And then there was that radio call telling Checo Perez to slow down, that they already have the points, that they have a great result. And then Checo Perez, couple of turns later, he just went straight ahead and then he, he couldn't catch up with Fernando Alonso. But it was a great result for Checo Perez. Imagine his first races on the second season, podium, second place. Then the third place in, uh, in Canada and another second place in Monza. So what a great season for Checo Perez. His second season in Formula One, he finished with 66 points and he was the 10th on the Drivers' Championship. Then that was this um, episode, this part when Checo Perez decided decide to sign for McLaren, right? Remember he was with the Ferrari Academy, but I saw some a couple of interviews and some uh, notes about this subject. And they're saying that Checo Perez had these two options. Option A, McLaren with a contract to be a driver in 2013 season, a driver in McLaren and what a team. McLaren is not just a regular team. It was a great team. He was going to be the, uh, the replacement for Lewis Hamilton, imagine. And then with Ferrari, there was not a contract. There was more like talk. They already have talk that when there was an opportunity, Checo Perez will be on Formula One with Ferrari. And for 2013 Ferrari, they already have signed their drivers, Felipe Massa and Kimi Raikkonen. So there was no chance for Checo Perez for that season. Then that's when McLaren comes offered him this uh, seat for the season and I think Checo Perez put everything on the balance drive right away with um, McLaren or wait a little longer with Ferrari he just went for McLaren we it's hard like if you are in, in on his position to think or decide which option was the best but he decided for McLaren it was not obviously a great um, year for Checo, for the team, and as we know that year, that's when McLaren started a little bit to going down as we knew before, even the season before, they were doing so good. So Checo Perez decided to sign for McLaren in 2013, and then, uh, well, he had this very difficult uh, season, but I think in that season also he showed that he was a very good Formula 1 driver. I think it was not easy to be a teammate with Jenson Button, the 2009 uh, Drivers' Championship. And when Checo Perez had the opportunity, he fought with uh, Jenson Button. And uh, sometimes Checo Perez won the position uh, to Jenson Button. So that showed that Checo Perez was ready to go. He wanted, he was hungry to be successful in Formula 1. There were other circumstances and Checo Perez uh, ended uh, being just for one year with McLaren. And then uh, 2014, well at the end of 2013, that's when they decide to sign the contract with Force India, which in my opinion was the best decision that Checo Perez made back then, because that was a team that wanted to improve, to show that they were good to be on the top. That was the change of the regulations for 2014. So I think they saw something in Checo Perez that they will help them to go to the next level. And I think they were right. So 2014, Checo Perez was a teammate with uh, Nico Hulkenberg for 2014 season. And I think that was, uh, Hulkenberg was ended being a little better than Checo Perez, but Checo Perez was showing a lot. He was showing that he was a very good Formula One driver. And not just to tell you a little bit, um, I went to a race in 2014 in, in Montreal, in Canada, the, the, that Grand Prix that it, 
it seemed like Checo Perez was going to win that race. I can tell you, he was driving so good. The Mercedes uh, had problems that day. Hamilton was a DNF. Rosberg had a lot of problems with the brakes. He was driving so good, Checo Perez won, and then the tires start to give up, and then everything ended with that huge accident with Felipe Massa. So just as a little uh, history, that was a great race. And my point says that Checo Perez was showing that he was going to be good for 2014. And that uh, season, he had, him, uh, he had a one podium in the Bahrain GP. And that was the second podium for the team and the whole history of the team. That was Checo Perez finish on third in Bahrain. So that was the second podium in the history of uh, Force India. Then for 2015, uh, Checo Perez, he had the chance to start better the championship and then he had another podium in Russia and that race, he did an, like, an amazing stra um, strategy and he was able to get that third position in Russia. That uh, year, he finished in ninth position with 78 points so that was very good for Checo Perez he was getting better and better and better in 2015 that was another thing that is good to talk about it because that was when Formula One returned to Mexico for the Mexican Grand Prix so that was very excited for all the Mexicans to see a Mexican driver in Formula One in Mexico so that was like the perfect combo to make that Grand Prix special ride right? for all the Mexicans he was very very excited and all just to see what, all how people was talking about it waiting for it and then we had it in 2015 for 2016 uh, Checo Perez he made or he has his best the best season ever in Formula One that year he scored a hundred and one points he finished in seventh position he had two podiums, one in Monaco, in Monaco, wow, and the other one in Baku. So he was, that was his best season, showing again and doing it again, beating Nico Hulkenberg. He did it already in 2015, now in 2016, showing that he was the driver, that he was giving more points to the team to improve, to be, po to be on the podium, to put force India and the podium with the big ones that was good so 2016 that was an amazing and amazing year for Checo Perez and as I said so far his best best uh, year in Formula 1 and in that year he tied uh, Pedro Rodriguez like, with the most podiums in Formula 1 so seven podiums by then in 2016 for Checo Perez so that was very very good for him then in 2017 they decide to change the his teammate uh, they released Nico Hulkenberg and then Stevan Ocon he come and joined the team for 2017 and what a year for them oh my god there was a lot of friction there was a lot of things that they were showing that there was a lot of stress to show who was better than the other uh, Spa Franco Champs on the wall, Baku in Canada. I think everything started in Canada when the team radio said that Checo Perez to let pass Ocon, he was fast. Uh, and Checo Perez was just like, well, let us race. And then he didn't let him pass, and then Scott went straight, and then everything started there. So that was a very difficult year, I think, for Checo Perez, for Esteban Ocon and for Force India. What a year, but it was a good year again for Checo Perez. Another 100 points, so he was kind of um, in the same la uh, line. 101 last year, 100 this year, that was great. He finished again in uh, seven position on the Drivers Championship and everything was going well as long as they could with uh, Force India and Checo Perez. 2018, uh, same drivers. Checo Perez with Esteban Ocon and again that year was kind of like there were so many things happening that year as we know uh, with all the, pro the legal problems with 
Force India. Then Checo Perez went and tried to help the team. So he was Checo Perez, I think, in this um, uh, situation between being focused on driving and being focused on all the legal uh, situation that what happened in that year. So this was not a great year for uh, him, for them. Uh, Checo Perez finished in eighth position on the drivers' championship with 62 points. But the highlight of the year for him, I think, is that he saved a lot of jobs for all the team, for all the people who worked uh, back, back then, maybe still now, in Force India. So 2018 ended not so good, and then 2019. 2019 was a transition when the new owner came to take, off, uh, take over on the team, Lawrence Stroll, and then uh, Stefan Ocon, he had to take a year off, and then they brought Lance Stroll, who he was on Williams on 2018 season. So they bring Lance Stroll to the team with his dad, Lawrence Stroll. So, and that year, I think that was the year when they were kind of like trying to understand everybody what the owners wanted, what uh, the team wanted, how the drivers can help. I think there was a lot of things going on. That was not a very good season for Checo Perez, but in that season, uh, he did uh, 40 points. He finished 10th on the championship, but since Singapore, Singapore was the last Grand Prix, Singapore 2019, that was the last Grand Prix that Checo Perez has no score points. After Singapore to right now, he has scored in every single race. Now it's 18, 18 races, races on the points. I think it's pretty good for Checo Perez. So that was the 2019 and then 2018, uh, 2020. The year so at the beginning of the year they give Checo Perez this contract until 2022 so everything looked like everything was going to be all right between the team between Checo everything looked good they went to Barcelona and they were doing very very good times the car was so fast and then that's when everybody find out ah, oh, this is something funny that car looks familiar so everybody was comparing the Mercedes-Benz from 2019 with the racing point of 2020 there is a lot of things that they look kind of the same and everybody has their point of view that no, we did it ourselves and then no there was complaints from uh, teams, Renault uh, I think Red Bull, McLaren, they were complaining so anyways, everything was perfect to start the season 2020 in Australia and then they happen what we all know with the COVID-19. Then they have to stop the season and Checo Perez I think was in a good rhythm to start the season and unfortunately he couldn't do it. Then we start in July and that was like kind of start all over again from zero. The cars were parked on the, on the garage for all this month. And then they have to start all over again. And then Checo Perez, he started like kind of like good he was getting better, and I think he had opportunities to be in good positions, top five, I mean. And then he got the COVID-19, so he missed misses two races. The two races in Silverstone, he couldn't race. That was very unfortunate, but when he came back, he was kind of like, with that mentality that he, he was good, he can improve, he can show that he can race as he's doing right now. And then slowly he started it, started it, started it until today, until Turkish Grand Prix when he got the second position. Then we had a bad incident in Imola with the call of the team to, to bring him to the pit when he was on, on third position already. And then there was another race when he went to the pit. And then uh, when the, he got out, there was a red flag, so he lost all the position and track. He couldn't uh, have the podium. But in Turkish, he showed Checo Perez what is he's made of, what he can do with pressure. He can do elbow to elbow, no matter who it is. If he knows that his car is going to be competitive, 
he can go elbow to elbow with anyone and we saw it with Verstappen with Albon putting the pressure to Checo Perez right behind him and he just did it great he was just driving on excellence so let's go back a little bit in August when the team decided to not continue with Checo Perez no longer no more and then to hire Sebastian uh, Vettel for the next season so I think since then Checo Perez I don't know if it's his pride or he wants to leave the team in honors showing what is his medal since that announcement Checo Perez has been driving excellent he's been driving so good he's been showing that he's a very good driver and he deserves to be in a better team right he has never been in a top team and he has showed these results podiums good races good uh, overtaking all that stuff that Checo Perez has and uh, I think was like a push to, for him to show them what is he's made of and I'm sure it's working because as I said at the very beginning everybody is talking about Checo Perez since the announcement uh, week, uh, week after week after week in the interviews the question is what is gonna happen with you next year uh, you are doing amazing what a great season right and at the end of the bottom line I think Checo Perez is gonna do his best season in Formula 1 that's proven he's gonna finish I don't know 4th, 5th or 6th but he's gonna do the best his best season as I say he's only 2 points away to break his record in Formula 1 he has that record of um, a Mexican in Formula 1 with most podiums now he has 9 podiums he's driving so well and that's when everything comes with the Red Bull thing has a one year off etc etc we don't know I don't know but I think we should enjoy and we should appreciate what he does because if he's off for a year or he ended not being in Formula 1 I think we want to miss that kind of driver on the grid because he's a very good driver and if he gets the seat with Red Bull he's gonna show for 100% sure what he's made of and who knows if he goes to Red Bull maybe he's finally gonna win a race we don't know I'm just giving my opinion and we'll see what happens but what about you let me know in um, the comments which one was the Checo Perez race that you enjoyed the most what podium was the one that put you to jump and yell on the couch uh, what do you think also about his future Red Bull has a year of another category what do you think let us know in the comments and with that we want to finish this video guys so thank you very much again for watching the video just as a reminder subscribe to the channel spread the word and uh, leave your comments about this uh, topic and that's it so we'll see you guys next time i really thank you i really appreciate that you take the time to watch this video my name is israel gutierrez and we'll see you next time